And now we're getting ready for our segment, Get Connected with Trisha Crane. Good morning. Welcome to the Alabama Way and our Get Connected segment. My name is Tricia Powell Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a nonprofit news organization covering K-12 education in Alabama. Um, we're joined this morning by Sonia, with, uh, Sonia DiCarlo. She's with the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund. And I'm very excited to have you here this morning, Sonia. Thank well, you for thank joining thank you us. very much for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, Sonia is going to talk to us a bit about how um, school choice opened up in Alabama a couple of years ago. And the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund helps students attend a, a private school through their uh, donation process. They collect donations and disperse them through scholarships. So Sonia's going to talk to us about that and a little bit later we're going to hear from Pastor David Craig um, with Mount Pilgrim Church, Baptist Church in Fairfield and uh, he is also uh, oversees a Christian school in Fairfield and how the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund has um, helped bring opportunities to some children who didn't have choices. So that was a mouthful, um, uh, and I really do appreciate you being here. Yes, with us, no, um, I appreciate you having me. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Well, I'm this hoping that maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund, um, what you do, mm -hmm. uh, and and how you do it. Sure. I mean, it's exciting to be able to be here with you today because when I talk to people, and people will say, "Well, give me your elevator speech," and mm -hmm. it has to be a really long elevator ride because right. there's just a lot to this and a lot to what we do. Mm -hmm. But just to suffice it to say that I don't know of any other law that has ever existed that has done more to help children in education than this law because it's an immediate change for children. Mm -hmm. And it does more to tackle things like teen pregnancy and teen violence and the dropout rate. It does more to tackle those issues with just this one law and what we can do and what I've personally seen and people mm -hmm. in my organization have seen than anything else. So it's very exciting to talk about. So just suffice it to say that's, you know, changing these kids' lives and having an opportunity for kids and families who feel stuck mm -hmm. is just it's it's it you know that's why I get out of bed every day right right and we have we've had a number of conversations I've yes. written a bit about the Alabama Accountability Act which is the law that Sonia is referring to it was passed in 2013 right um, and what it said it had three parts to the law there was the school flexibility function which allowed for some innovation in, in public schools there was a it was a pretty controversial law when it was passed but mm -hmm. you know we're three years in now and I think it's a good time to talk about experience right um, the second part of the law had to do with tax credit scholarships for parents mm -hmm. who were um, ch moving their child from a failing public school to either another pu uh, public school or to a private school. And then the third part of the law is where your organization comes in, and that has to do with the tax credit scholarships. Right. right? And so the way it works is um, there are scholarship granting organizations, and okay. we are one of them. We are a nonprofit company, mm -hmm. so we don't work for the government, mm -hmm. but we are a nonprofit organization, a scholarship granting organization that basically takes in those dollars, mm -hmm. and then we use those dollars and let parents know if they qualify first come first serve basis they take that award letter if you will and they can go to the school of their choice so they can go to um, a private school a parochial school they can even go to a public school mm -hmm. so and we've actually seen some movement in that direction educating families about that is important too because if you are going out of district to another public school and there mm -hmm. is a transfer fee we can pay for that fee and we can pay for mandatory fees as well so um, um, so there are some fees that we can and cannot pay for for that. So that helps tremendously for that public to public transfer. Sure. The whole idea is to find a school that is a good fit for your child. Mm -hmm. And if your child struggles with ADD or if you have other issues or if they just want a smaller environment or maybe mm -hmm. they want to change for athletics or um, they just aren't learning in the school that they're at, this gives them an option to take those dollars and to go to a school of their choice. So that's the crux of it. 
um, you know, then you can start getting into the weeds of how it works. You know? Right, right. And that's where, you know, that's a good explanation. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, very helpful to get the big picture of how uh, we call them SGOs. You know, we love acronyms yes. in education. So uh, scholarship granting organizations and SGOs are the same thing. Um, and so, but there is a uh, it, it, there is an eligibility requirement, right, to to be awarded a scholarship. Right. What is that eligibility so requirement? So basically, what I do put in my elevator speech is okay. that this is an income based scholarship program. Okay. It's not a merit based. So um, you do not have to the children don't have to be making certain grades or even maintain certain grades. It is based on income, and okay. basically, it's the same income guidelines if you um, qualify for free and reduced lunch. Okay. So. So, um, you know, you can go to our website and you can find out specifically if you have a two-parent household, three-person household, four-person, mm -hmm. you know, what you would need to make. But it's basically low-income families okay. who meet that free and reduced lunch guidelines. It's very similar to that. So, um, and you apply and you have to jump through a lot of hoops to apply. Mm -hmm. I mean, a parent who goes through this has to really want it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to provide a lot of tax documentation, a lot of personal information about where you live. You're address. Mm -hmm. If you are um, zoned for a public school, which school are you zoned for? Is mm -hmm. it considered a failing school or a non-failing school? And that makes a difference because we give priority to those families who um, either have children attending a failing school mm -hmm. or who are zoned to a failing school. So, um, well, let me stop you there mm -hmm. because I want to explain to our audience about failing schools yes. because that term, it's a tough one to say. You know, nobody likes to think of their schools as failing. Right. And, and that definition of, of who is failing is, is crafted by our lawmakers. And they have said that stay at schools that are in the bottom 6% of achievement statewide are considered failing public schools. So that list is released typically every January. Right. And because it's the bottom 6%, it's always going to be 75 or 80 schools um, that are going to be on that list. Mm -hmm. The definition can change from year to year, but while we're taping this, the definition right. is um, that it's a that the bottom six percent are in a failing public school. So children that are zoned for failing public schools have priority on the scholarships. Correct. Okay. Correct. And um, you know, and, and it's really interesting because when a family, when a parent or a grandparent or a guardian fills out an application, a lot of times, you know, it will ask, "Is your child um, zoned for a failing?" school or attending a failing public school and oftentimes a family will fill out yes yes and a lot of times they don't realize there's actually a list right, that they need right. to go to but in their <clears throat> minds yes my child is attending a failing school because it's failing their child mm -hmm. and they think surely this child is attending a failing school because this school is really having issues mm -hmm. and we find oftentimes that the school is not necessarily on the failing schools list right, right. and so um, and then that we have to we have to verify all that information it's it's very time consuming there are a lot of hoops to jump through but the failing school you know, identification is really intriguing. I mean, so school choice is taken off across the country. There mm -hmm. are 23 plus states that have varying degrees of school choice programs. They all look a little different. Mm -hmm. Not all of them follow this failing school model that right. we do. Right. Um, you know, we would prefer to just say, we're out here offering options. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are families whose children are attending schools that aren't on the failing school list and right. their kids are struggling mightily. Right. And they want help, they want to get them someplace else. And then there are children who are attending what is considered a failing school, but they may be doing very well. Mm -hmm. They may be making A's and B's, they may have connected with certain teachers at their school, they may have good parental. Um, you know, help at home. Mm -hmm. They may have a good support system. So just because a child is attending a failing public school doesn't mean that that child is going to fall through the cracks. Right. And just good because point. a child is attending a non-failing school doesn't mean that the system is not failing that child. Right. Right. That's, so. that's a very helpful explanation. Well, there are a lot of parts to this and we're going to take a break in just a minute and we're going to come back with the next segment. We're going to talk about um, how people, how does the money get collected? And mm -hmm. if you want to donate to an SGO, how do you do that? Yes. And maybe a little bit more about where y'all are. Um, I know that you reach out to people all over the state. Yes. And, uh, and I think we'd all like to hear a little bit more. Absolutely. So please stay tuned. 
Welcome back. Um, my name is Tricia Crane. I'm happy to be with you here today on the Get Connected segment on uh, the Alabama Way. I'm joined today by Sonia DiCarlo, who is the Director of Communications for Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund, yeah. which is a scholarship granting organization that matches students who are, are looking for school choice with their opportunities. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think I found your elevator speech. <laughs> How about that? Um, so uh, we were talking earlier about how do you go about getting the scholarship and, and that there are some hoops to jump through mm -hmm. and you know you have to really want to go there. Right. Um, but I was thinking maybe we could backtrack just a bit and talk about where where are you? Are you really all over Alabama? And, mm -hmm. and maybe if you could tell us a little bit about that. So this last year, the fifth, for the 15-16 school year, we um, gave out 2,100 scholarships across the state of Alabama. Okay. A lot of people are surprised to hear you know, that the number's in the thousands. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have thousands more who would like the opportunity, but mm -hmm. we used up all the funds that we collected. Mm -hmm. It was right at $12 million for that 15-16 that school okay. year. Um, we had children in 126 schools all across the state wow. in 36 counties all across the state. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we do. We travel the state. Obviously, our largest concentration is going to be in those big metro areas in Mobile and then in Montgomery and Birmingham and Huntsville. That's mm -hmm. where our largest concentration of children are. But we absolutely have children in um, other you know pockets of the state and you know we really try very hard to reach out to a lot of our black belt communities too and a lot of the areas of the state where we have failing schools that have been identified by the state mm -hmm. we try to reach out to them because when they have options then that's a perfect community to go to and say let's talk about where you are and where your children are and if you're feeling trapped there's an option for you in this community so we try really hard to we look at our map we have a mm -hmm. map that has identified red dots of where all of our failing schools mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. and we can eyeball that and say okay this is where we need to concentrate and this is where we can do the most good Okay, so you do you identify communities and you mm -hmm. really you really reach out. You're not necessarily waiting on people to come to you. Right. Um, we were talking a little during the break, and you said that in the larger communities, it really isn't a problem of getting parents to to find you right. anymore. Um, but maybe in some of the more rural areas, uh, because there are some rural schools on the failing schools list, mm -hmm. and choices can be limited. Um, right. But you can also y'all have you help provide some of those options. Right, so you know, and so this is such an education process and so my mm -hmm. job is Director of Communications and I feel like I educate parents and I'm educating schools, um, donors, we're edu I, I feel like everywhere I go, you know, I, when somebody asks me, I say, do you want the short version or do you have about a half hour? Right. But um, right. so basically we are educating schools as well because there are private schools, parochial schools in a lot of counties who just don't know a lot about this law. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they've heard about it, they know something about it, they know that there are schools and they could do it but they either don't want to necessarily learn more because they're good where they are mm -hmm. or you know they're just unsure about it so if we find that there's a need in that community and we see that there are private schools parochial schools that could help we will go over there and set up an interview or set up a meeting with them and educate them about how other schools do it mm -hmm. what they can do and the, the interesting thing is that a lot of private schools or across the country already have usually a, a certain amount of dollars that they use for scholarship funds right, for financial children. Aid yes, sort of financial thing. aid. Right, right. And so if they allow the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund to work with them and partner with these schools, this these dollars that will follow the children mm -hmm. can help free up those dollars, those financial aid dollars at that school to either help them augment other areas that they need or to help right. more students in right. their community. So um, I think a lot of the schools realize that and they hear about that. And mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I did want to point out is that the, the way this program works and the way it was designed is that the money follows the child. Okay. So if a parent says, okay, my child is struggling mightily in this school and you know they're, they're failing and I'm not getting the help I need and you know they're just misunderstood so they say there's another school five miles away I can go to and they enroll them in this other school if we're three four months into the school system and they realize you know what this isn't working too well mm -hmm. you know I thought mm -hmm. it would be I did my homework I thought it would be but I think this other school I heard about since then will work better 
they can move the child okay. and the dollars follow the child. Okay. So we will give the dollars to that initial school for those first three or four months. We prorate it. Mm -hmm. And then from then for the rest of the year, the dollar goes to the new school. So the okay. money always follows the child. Parent never sees the money. Mm -hmm. The schools see the money. And the schools see the money for that particular student. It's up to $8,000 for a high school student, okay. 6500 for a middle school student, and about 5000 for an elementary st school student. And those limits were set by law, correct? Well, Please? and so the different, there is a limit that the law has set, but we follow our own guidelines. Okay. You can um, raise them a little bit up or down. Okay. But um, that's the guidelines that Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund has set. Okay. And we consider that to be very, very comparable, if not better than um, what a lot of our private schools are already doing. So it helps to pay for most of, if not all the tuition at most of the schools we partner with. Okay. That's very interesting. And I want to make sure that we have enough time to talk about donors. So mm -hmm. I want to hit really quickly on you know, uh, one, one of the big pieces of this, is you alluded to just now, is finding that right fit. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you really can't tell parents, right? I mean, parents really need to do their homework. They need to look at the website or visit the school. Best, mm -hmm. you know, visit the school. Make sure that you know that you can get there. Make sure that you know if uniforms are required. Um, that that sort of homework is really up to the parents. Right. Um, which parents should be doing that anyway in their public school. They need to know, you know, right. where they're going and that sort of right. thing. But. Um, and I don't want to belabor that, but I think that in the beginning there were a lot of questions about how do I know which school to go to, and it's just hard to underestimate uh, or, or uh, how important mm -hmm. uh, that visit to that school and making sure that your child will be comfortable. Absolutely, with absolutely. This is another interesting um, tidbit that I'll share with you, and th that we have learned from working in this program. There are reasons, you know, a handful of reasons that people who don't like this law will say why they don't like it. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons is they say that you're going to take the students from the public schools that whose parents are very involved and chances are that that student is doing very well and you're taking the cream of the crop mm -hmm. from those public schools yeah. and you're putting them in and they're moving to the private schools. What we have seen is just the opposite and I'm going to explain why. Okay. So if a student is happy in the public school they're at, whether it's a failing public school or a, a non-failing public school, there will be no desire, strong desire, on right. the parent's point to move that child. The, right. the student's not going to want to necessarily meet, move. If they're making decent grades and if they have cool friends right. and their parents are really not, they'd have to fight not only their child, but they're not going to move their child. What we find is the parents we get are the children who are struggling. Right. So we're getting right. the kids who are making the D's and the F's, the kids who are getting suspended and can't get back in, the parents who are frustrated because they can't find help for their children in that school. Mm -hmm. So the parents that we get and the children we get are the children who are really struggling. So mm. I think that that really right. what was expected and what's whole, happened has exactly really been two something different, different things. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Okay, yeah. now in our just couple of minutes we yes. have left. Okay, um, I want to discuss. Donors, that's such a key part of this program, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we don't have to educate our we don't have to educate our parents anymore. We mm -hmm. have a list thousands of parents across the state who are ready and wanting choice. Like mm -hmm. I said, they're desperate. So what we need now is to make sure we hit this cap. So the state hits the state sets a cap of thirty million dollars. Okay. And so once we hit that cap, nobody else can donate. So the way the donation works is that individuals and companies can designate a portion of their tax liability. So okay. if you owe $2,000, if you're an individual and if you owe $2,000 at the end of a tax year, you can designate $1,000 of that. Well, you can designate up to $50,000. So okay. you in can your tax individually, liability. yes, yeah. individuals right. can designate up to $50,000. Okay. Um, and so and companies can designate up to 50% of their liability. Oh. And so you go on to My Alabama, My Alabama Taxes mm -hmm. and you set up an account, which doesn't take very long. I mean, most people who pay online anyway, pay with the Department of Revenue, this is how they do it. Mm -hmm. You get a My Alabama Taxes account, you go online, it, you, you go to the little part where it says SGO Donation. I've seen that. SGO it's Donation. Right there, right. As soon as you click on there, you say how much you want to designate 
and then you ask, it'll ask you who you want to designate it to. There's probably a half a dozen organizations you want to choose mm -hmm. Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund. Okay. We are the largest organization. We help the most children. We are a parent-driven organization. Okay. I think that if, don't just click one and decide, oh, they're all the same. The SGAs are not all the same. Okay. So, um, and then you go on there and then you write a check to us within 30 days and then you get all those dollars back. It's a dollar for dollar credit. So anything right. you designate or donate, you get it all back. Right, and not as in you get a check back for it, but you get to take it off your tax liability. Exactly, exactly, right. the, the, for your taxes in the next right. year. Right. Yes. Okay, so, we yeah. rushed that part, and yes. I apologize. No, that's fine. It's that's all fine. very important, but it can all be found on your website, yes. right? Which we'll yes. have here. Right, it's alabamascholarshipfund.org. Okay, and if when, you, when we come back, we're going to have the pleasure of speaking with Pastor David Craig. Um, about his Christian school in Fairfield um, that is enrolls students using the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund scholarship. So thank Absolutely. you, Sonia, for thank being you. with us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Stay Thanks tuned. Welcome back. Um, thanks for joining us here today on the uh, Get Connected segment of the Alabama Way. My name is Tricia Crane and I'm here today. I'm thrilled to be here with Pastor David Craig. Yes. Thank you for being here today. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Um, pastor Craig is the pastor of Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church in Fairfield and uh, also presides over Mount Pilgrim Christian Academy. Uh, which is a school that, uh, if you were here with us for the last two segments, we were talking with Sonia DiCarlo from the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund. She was helping us understand the mechanisms of how Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Fund helps facilitate um, children uh, attending a private school. It's a school choice program, basically, and your school participates. And again, that was a, a long introduction, but I want to say hello again. Thank you for being here. Well, I'm glad to be here and to share. And uh, Mount Pilgrim is a uh, people-building ministry. We are building people for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, several years ago, we got involved in education, okay. and we formed the Mount Pilgrim Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, the academy has been around since uh, 2005. Okay. And uh, we uh, go from kindergarten uh, through sixth grade, mm -hmm. and we do have a pre-K. But uh, the uh, Alabama Accountability Act uh, was a blessing uh, for us because there were a number of parents who wanted it different for their children, mm -hmm. but they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And so when the act on the law was passed, it gave them an opportunity for a choice. Mm -hmm. and, but before the law was passed, I got involved and trying to help it because uh, I saw so many parents stuck. Mm -hmm. They wanted a choice, low income, didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. They had to go where their child was zoned and with people who had money or influence, they could place their child where they wanted them. Right. And so we, I, I became an advocate going around the state or talking to legislators to try to persuade them to pass the law so that we can okay. give parents an option. And I know having a choice is, uh, is powerful. Right, right. Well, and, it, and it's a responsibility too. You yes. know, Sonia and I talked about, you know, the, the need to make sure that you know that it's a great fit. So, uh, so your school, uh, Mount Pilgrim Christian Academy, enrolls children from uh, pre-K through sixth grade, yes. right? And the scholarship funds are available for kindergarten through sixth, well, kindergarten through twelfth grade, but yeah. for your school all the way through sixth grade. I'm wondering, you know, um, Oftentimes, private school, uh, especially perhaps a Christian academy, yeah. can offer a different type of learning environment. Yes. And I'm wondering how, if you've seen um, with the students that enter your school, you know, the change from being in a public school perhaps where things are, maybe it's a big school, yeah. uh, you know, and things can be a bit chaotic. What kind of, what do you, do you see any changes in the students that come from, uh, you know, the public schools into your school? Yes, uh, we uh, enroll, uh, especially kids from the Accountability Act mm -hmm. who've been a part of a failing school mm -hmm. system. And a lot of them come to our school and immediately you see a change in their disposition. Wow. Uh, they uh, become more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then we try to create a, a learning culture at Mount Pilgrim where kids can come in and they can achieve. Mm -hmm. We have smaller classrooms and 
but it is one that promotes uh, their individuality where they can grow and to develop. Mm -hmm. So the children that we've seen uh, who have come to be a part of our program, we see them excited, we see them growing, we see a change mm -hmm. in their lives, and more importantly, uh, well, along with that, we see the, the gratification of that parent mm -hmm. who had a choice, right. or that they could place their child in a place that they thought that they could get a better education mm -hmm. because we know that education is a game changer. Right. And a child getting a high quality education really changed the trajectory of their lives. Right. And so we've seen uh, the number of students that come in and their lives change, they get involved in the learning and they, uh, they do well. And mm -hmm. so it's been good just to have the option for parents right. to be able to bring their children to a school such as Mount Pilgrim Christian Academy. Wow, uh, that's that's good news for a lot of parents, yeah. I know. And I know we, we talked a little bit um, um, before we went on air about where some of the students, uh, you know, because when kids graduate yeah. out at the sixth grade level, they go on to other places. Yes. And you said they go a lot of different places. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have students, they left us, they go to other Christian schools, other private schools, then others go back into the public schools and they go back and do well. They just go to a different school and they go there and achieve. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, this year, uh, looking at some of the graduations, uh, kids who have been in our school, mm -hmm. a lot of them graduated with honors and they are ready oh. to go to college. And that's the testimony that we have. And our children, they come back to visit with us, bring us their card, their parents call us and let us know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we have a pretty good track record and we are proud and excited about making a difference in the life of a child, that right. they can have hope of a right. better future. Right. And it uh, doesn't matter where you, uh, your income or your zip code. Mm -hmm. And so we get an opportunity to help uh, create or to to get them excitement about what the possibilities are for their lives. Mm -hmm. And so a good education does that. Absolutely. Um, and that those foundational years, kindergarten through sixth grade and yes. pre-K, yeah. uh, you know, pre-kindergarten all the way through sixth grade, if you can get that good foundation there, you really can go on to succeed. Yeah. Um, and I know, I think you mentioned that some of the kids uh, that graduate from your program go into magnet programs yes. like Ramsey yeah. or Phillips, Phillips in Birmingham yes. City Schools. Um, I'm curious about uh, the children that attend your school. Are they mostly from the Fairfield community? Do you have a larger draw? Do you know? We have children from all over. They come oh. from different parts of Birmingham, Fairfield, Midfield, uh, some out of Bessemer. We've had parents to drive from uh, Leeds just oh. to bring their children to Fairfield. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a, a pretty good draw from a all around mm -hmm. no particular area. Yeah, well, that, and I've always thought that's interesting about a private yeah. school, um, you know, that you can draw kids from all over the place yeah. instead of just one neighborhood. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of, it sometimes allows for bigger conversations to happen, yeah. you know? But to give parents an opportunity to find a place that works for their children. Mm -hmm. And I'm an advocate of choice, mm -hmm. and that's what the, um, the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship Organization does. They give parents uh, who are low income or part of a field of school, they get a choice to say, I want to place my child in a school that can meet my child's needs. So I applaud uh, what takes place with the Alabama Scholarship uh, Group and what they are doing. And we have uh, students in our school who are on scholarship. Okay. And we've seen the difference in their lives. And more importantly, like I said, the parents that they have a sense that they have a stake and then they can make a choice. But before the Alabama Opportunity Scholarship uh, uh, passed, before the, the law passed, the accountability law passed, that parents with low income, they had no choice right. but to go to where they were assigned. And you could see people who had money, I said again, and influence. Right. Some can just pick up the telephone and they can get their child enrolled. But what do you say to a parent uh, who is struggling financially? Right. But they're concerned about the future of their children and they know an education can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so and they, are, and they are stuck in a school that's not meeting their child's needs. Right. Now the, the school may not necessarily be a failing school. 
Right. But if it's not meeting their child's need, why keep them, uh, I would say, locked in that position when we can have a change and give that child a chance and give and empower parents right. to have a choice? And that's what um, my, my position is. I think that you ought to be able to send the child to where you think they're best served. Mm -hmm. And so the scholarships uh, and the Accountability Act give parents that opportunity. Right. Well, and that was something new for Alabama. You know, yeah. it was highly controversial when it was first passed. And yeah. um, I think I'd mentioned to Sonia, you know, we're three years in now. Yeah. So we have some experience with um, what is actually happening with enrollment yeah. and who's choosing to uh, use the scholarship program and um, the fact that it is limited to families who would otherwise be eligible for free or reduced lunch yeah. prices. You know, this is really targeted at um, people who don't have that power or that yeah. money and can make a phone call and, you know, get their child placed in yeah. a different school. So, um, gosh, you know, I, I'd love to hear, uh, I, maybe you can come back again and we can talk about uh, some experiences of some of your kids. Yeah. Uh, I, really, I appreciate what you do. I really appreciate you being here with us. It okay. was, it goes fast, doesn't it? We, it we really talk does. fast. Um, but I appreciate, thank you for being here with us, Pastor Craig. Okay, and I would like to put a plug in for Mount Pilgrim Christian Academy. Please do. If you want to call the school, 205 780 5096 and speak Great. with our principal, our secretary. Okay. Uh, we are open and you can come and share. This summer we have STEM program and uh -huh. we have a summer enrichment camp going on this summer to help children over the summer. So. That's great. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't aware of that. I'm glad you got to say that. And we'll certainly put the website on okay. the screen. Okay. And um, it's, it's as easy as picking up the phone. Yes. Right? Yes. Thank you. Thanks for the work that you do in our communities. And, um, and thanks again for being with us here on the Alabama Way.